Hello, thank you for staying uh, first. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm just going to ask a couple of questions and then we can open it up to the audience. Um, I was very moved by what you said at the beginning for the introduction when you mentioned that the project started here when you met uh, Roberto Sav Saviano. And was it when you decided to make this film or you had the idea in mind before? And I also wanted to ask um, if personally it was a challenge for you to, to work from like, such a renowned like, um, novelist and, 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 and journalist to, to work on a new project um, like this. Okay. No, I'm sorry if I answer in, uh, in English. Uh, can I? Please, it's better for me. In Italian, sorry, no, in English, no, in English. No, but you said it in English, so... No, no, it's better in Italian. I, I would like to talk in English, but it's better if I, I answer in Italian, because I can say more things. E, allora, Roberto Saviano, lo scrittore di questo romanzo, io l'avevo conosciuto quando ho fatto due episodi di una serie che si chiama Gomorra, e dove lui era l'autore, in qualche modo, del, dell'idea dei soggetti. So Roberto Saviano, the writer uh, of the book that uh, this film is based on, um, I'd met him before because uh, uh, I was the, the director for two episodes of a TV series, Gomorra, and he was the mm, writer and the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the creator of the, the story for that TV series. E dopo aver fatto questi episodi di Gomorra ho fatto un film che abbiamo presentato anche qua due anni fa che si chiama Fiore che era una storia d'amore di due adolescenti in un carcere minorile che Roberto ha visto e dopo aver visto questo film mi ha offerto il suo romanzo and um, you know after um, having uh, done those two episodes as a filmmaker um, I actually made another movie a feature film Fiore was the title it was shown here two years ago at Open Roads and uh, it was uh, a story of two teenagers who fall in love in a um, in a jail for minors and Roberto actually saw the screening and after that he offered me his book io ho accettato qui a New York proprio ma siamo venuti io e Maurizio lo sceneggiatore e ho accettato subito con l'idea appunto di non fare un film ehm, sul, su dei criminali come dicevo prima cioè un crime, un film di genere ma di fare una specie di romanzo di formazione e Roberto era assolutamente d'accordo e abbiamo riscritto il film che è molto diverso per certe cose dal suo romanzo So I accepted uh, this offer here and I spoke to Maurizio, my uh, screenwriter, and um, you know, what I was very interested in is that I didn't want to make a movie on criminals, as I said uh, before the movie when um, I spoke. I wanted to, I didn't want to make a genre uh, crime film. I wanted to make a coming of age story. And when I uh, mentioned this to Roberto, he was immediately on board. I mean, it's pretty clear, uh, I hope some of you have seen um, Claudio's previous film, that you're very inspired by um, outsiders, young people, people who are on the norm, and not fitting in society in a normal way, so it seems like it was a natural story for you. Um, and, and I like the way you emphasize on like the, the coming of age, the loss of innocence, the loss of, of hope in a, in a very odd world. So uh, it seems like it was very inspirational for you to continue in that direction. Ma guarda, eh, questo è il terzo film che faccio con dei protagonisti adolescenti, quindi vorrei smettere, spero di riuscire a fare qualcos'altro. <ride> però quello che mi ha comunque appassionato in maniera sincera poi in questi tre film è stato raccontare l'adolescenza come un'età che per me è amorale e per me lo dico in maniera virtuosa, cioè una moralità che significa eh, raccontare dei personaggi che devono capire cos'è il bene e cos'è il male. Well, actually, this is my third film uh, with um, lead characters who are teenagers, and I kind of want to stop doing that. I uh, hope I can do something else after this. Having said that, um, what I was really in interested in was telling a story of um, adolescence as a time uh, which is amoral. Um, you know, it, it is a time in which um, people haven't yet figured out how to separate between good and evil. Also, what I find striking in the film is like you don't put a judgment on them. I mean, they're, they're loving character, they're doing bad things, they're 
you know, pushed in the society that doesn't really give them a lot of choice, but it's when you watch a film like this and you know that it's gonna go wrong because there's no other way, um, but you really don't put a judgment on that and you, you follow their story and, and we really care about them. And I also uh, wanted to discuss a little bit with you, it's like the, the casting because it's a lot of uh, non-professional actor mixed with more professional actors, which you have to find a right balance where everybody can work together with their different level of, of acting and interpretation in their life. So can you talk a little bit about this aspect of the, the film? E, ma sicuramente l'assenza di giudizio viene dal fatto che io quando faccio un film io li amo i personaggi e quindi per amare qualcuno non, non devi giudicarlo nel momento in cui tu metti un giudizio metti una distanza quindi per me questa è la prima cosa Well, definitely, um, the absence of judgment is based on the fact that I love my characters. Uh, when I make a movie, I fall in love with my characters. And you know, when you love somebody, um, the first prerequisite is that you have to um, suspend judgment, because uh, uh, that's what judgment kills it. Quindi siamo abituati a un cinema in cui ci sono i buoni e ci sono i cattivi. Questa è una divisione che io e anche no, non solo io quando scriviamo un film e gli sceneggiatori non facciamo mai, non dividiamo mai i personaggi in buoni e cattivi. We're used to a cinema uh, with bad guys and good guys and this is something that I and uh, the writers that I work with never do. We never separate between mm, good guys and bad guys. Cerchiamo di comprendere, di avere empatia, quindi di condividere i sentimenti dei personaggi in quel modo, secondo me ha anche un valore politico questa cosa perché tu metti al centro l'essere umano e ne riconosci i sentimenti che sono poi universali. Uh, so we try to understand the feelings of our characters and I believe that this has a political value because what we do is putting um, our people, our characters in the center and that has a universal value. Riguardo al fatto di mischiare attori professionisti e attori non professionisti è qualcosa che non è semplice. Per esempio, io nel mio film precedente ho lavorato con Valerio Mastandrea che stava su questo palco qua, che è uno degli attori, secondo me, eh, più bravi che ci sono in Italia, ma forse anche non solo in Italia, perché ha un livello di verità molto alto. Quando hai degli attori che hanno un livello di verità così alto, puoi lavorare insieme anche con, puoi lavorare con loro e con dei non professionisti insieme. You do speak fast. Yeah, say what, too <laughs> fast for no. um, oh, she's great. So in terms of uh, mixing uh, professional actors uh, with non-professional actors, well, it's definitely not easy. Uh, actually, in uh, my previous film, I worked with Valerio Mastandrea, a great actor who was on this stage a few minutes ago. And uh, I have the highest respect for what he does. And I believe um, the level of, of acting and the level of uh, uh, commitment he has is extremely high. And that also allows you to work with non-professional actors when, when you do that. Uh, That helps you to pull it off. Poi riguardo questo film la parte più difficile e lunga è stata proprio la ricerca del cast perché per trovare questi otto ragazzi ne abbiamo visti 4.000 e 4.000 è un numero reale. The hardest part in terms of making this movie and casting was uh, finding these eight uh, kids because to uh, find the final uh, eight kids we actually saw 4.000 people and 4.000 is not an exaggeration, it's a real number we saw. Cioè più che un casting è stato un censimento. <laughs> it wasn't a uh, casting process, it was a census. <laughs> so you, you cast nearly everyone in the city of Napoli? <laughs> Not everyone, but everyone in the um, popular neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone who can ride a scooter was... No, seriamente, no, il livello erano, noi cercavamo tre cose molto precise. La prima, una conoscenza diretta dei temi del film. Quindi abbiamo, siamo andati nei quartieri dove queste cose accadono e volevamo dei ragazzi che conoscessero direttamente queste cose. La seconda cosa che cercavamo erano dei volti innocenti, perché appunto il film ha come tema la perdita dell'innocenza e questa innocenza doveva essere chiara, riflessa sul volto. E la terza cosa, un'attitudine eh, alla recitazione. Un, una, un talento innato per la recitazione. Queste tre cose su 4.000 ce l'avevano in otto. Actually, uh, to speak seriously, um, what we were looking for was three things. Uh, first of all, uh, first-hand knowledge of the issues that the film is about. Uh, so we wanted for people, for kids, uh, to have experienced the, what we um, talk about in the movie, to have um, seen them in their own lives. The second um, 
thing that we were looking for is that the faces needed to convey an idea of innocence because the movie is about the loss of innocence and therefore they needed to be credible. The faces needed to uh, communicate that uh, from the uh, outset. The third thing was uh, to have um, an attitude for uh, that, that was suitable for acting, uh, a talent for acting. And um, these three things, out of the 4,000 people we saw, well, only eight of them had it. Um, I, I would like to ask one final question before we open to the public. It's, um, I, I find the cinematography of the film quite striking. I think you work with the same director of photography in all your films, uh, Daniele Tsipri. Uh, and um, can you talk about a little bit about your collaboration with him? Like you keep working uh, with him. Because you know Daniele Tsipri. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and he, he, I mean, I know you also work with uh, Marco Bellocchio and. Uh, yeah, he's a director too. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. not this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And and, and it's. Uh, I, I love his work. Me too. And well, I hope so. so. No, me too. As a director, <laughs> I love. It was on my Daniele, my cinema. I try in English because it's it's easy question. Um, um, Daniele, it's <laughs> the other. It was more difficult. Daniele is uh, um, one of my my best director. When I start to work, I studied the movie of uh, Daniele Cipri, Cipri e Maresco, incredible movie. And Daniele start to make uh, also as. Um, DOP, yes, yes. He starts to make a DOP. When he starts to make a DOP, we start to collaborate together, and this is our third movie together, and I love him. But how did you meet him? Then you, you knew him from as a director, but you... Because Marco Bellocchio discovered him as a, as a DOP, with Vincere, yes. uh, I think uh, seven, eight years ago. After he made Vincere, because Marco Bellocchio is a maestro, okay, Okay, we have a chance. So please, uh, Daniele, uh, do you want to make this movie? It was Ali Blue Eyes, Ali Blue Eyes, um, uh, previous Fiore. And he said, okay, yes, of course. And then we start a big friendship and big collaboration. Yeah. Congratulations on the yes. <laughs> Uh, I want to leave room for the audience to okay. speak with you too. So uh, do we, we have microphone, yes. So raise your hand and uh, we'll call on you and we'll give you a microphone before you can speak. Uh, could yes. repeat the question for the people on the iPad and the computer? Yeah, but uh, I mean, they'll, they'll have a microphone too. And if you speak in Italian, then uh, Lilia will translate, but it's better if you speak in English. Uh, so I can understand too. Uh, there's someone here? Yes. Right there, the lady with the blonde hair. Thank you. Hi, beautiful film. Uh, it up Thank there you. with uh, Truffaut, some of the, you know, the 400 blows. Uh, you say what you say? Oh, too much, thank you. <laughs> so, it's blushing now. The question I had was, there was the push and pull between being very innocent, they were children. They kept, you know, the thing about the, the, the little jelly cookie, et cetera. But then they went with the guns. How did you get them to have that push and pull? Okay. Sorry, uh, uh, Italian answer. Ma il, um, la cosa fondamentale eh, su cui abbiamo lavorato da subito è stata l'idea del gioco, perché questo film inizia come un gioco e finisce come una guerra. The fundamental thing that we worked on from the outset is the idea of um, a, a game playing, because uh, this film starts out with a game and ends with a war. Il gioco è qualcosa da, da cui tu puoi uscire, il gioco è irreversibile. Quando non, non puoi uscire dal gioco, che è quello che dice il film, uh, si, si entra in una tragedia. Uh, a game is something that you can get out of. Uh, it is reversible. When you can no longer get out of it, well, uh, it turns into a tragedy. Ma quello che invece poi era al centro di tutto questo è questo sentimento del gioco che qualsiasi cosa veniva fatta, anche in maniera, anche scene criminali, hanno sempre a che fare con l'inconsapevolezza, con l'incoscienza, con appunto una dimensione che è tragica perché stanno facendo qualcosa di violento, ma allo stesso tempo spensierata perché lo vivono con assoluta innocenza. E in questa contraddizione poi per me almeno c'è il film. Um, 
what is at the center of the film is this uh, feeling of the game, uh, which is uh, underlying even in the criminal uh, the crime scenes, uh, because at the basis of it, there's always this lack of um, consciousness of it, this lack of awareness of what they're doing, uh, which you know, even when they're doing tragic things, well, they, they live them, they experience that with a complete lack of awareness of it. And in this contradiction, for me, well, that's where the film essence lies. There was, uh, there's someone here in the back. Uh, Hi. Um, do I go with English? Ita Italiano? English? Yeah, All right. English. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I love the movie. So I was interested about the, the relationship between yeah, the movie and the soundtrack. So like I noticed that it was the, the first music in the background was only after Nicola killed the, the, the bad guy. So not before, and I think also not after. So can you tell, me, can you tell us more about that? Ma eh, sì, allora, in questo film la maggior parte delle musiche sono le musiche che ascoltano veramente i ragazzi e che io a volte trovo anche orrende. Uh, so in this film, uh, most of the music are the music that the kids actually listen to, which for uh, the vast majority I think are horrible. Ma raccontano comunque il loro mondo, quindi le abbiamo scelte insieme, sono musiche proposte da loro. But they do... Uh, tell the story of their world. So we chose them together, uh, they were chosen by them. La, loro per esempio ascoltano moltissimo il reggaeton, che è questo, questa distorsione della musica latinoamericana che incontra la discoteca. They listen uh, to a lot of uh, reggaeton, which is this uh, fusion of Latin American uh, music and uh, eh, sì, and disco music, music, and they listen to that a lot in discos. E poi c'è la musica neomelodica napoletana, eh, che sono che questo Tony Colombo è un cantante che veramente esiste, quello che viene più volte ehm, citato nel film. E poi c'è la musica classica neapolitana, neomelodica, questo singer Tony Colombo, che è menzionato molte volte nel film, in realtà esiste. Poi c'è un'eccezione invece, che è la scena in cui stanno in discoteca, che ascoltano un pezzo dei Daft Punk, che si chiama Giorgio by Moroder. E lì è stato un pareggio, perché piaceva a me e piaceva a loro. A loro piaceva perché Moroder è il compositore di Scarface, che per loro è un grande riferimento. A me piaceva perché è un pezzo dei Daft Punk, e quindi su quello siamo stati felici entrambi. Un po' meno la produzione, perché è stato un pezzo abbastanza costoso. <ride> Um, there's one exception, and it's in the, the disco scene, and it's a Da Punk um, piece, uh, the George by Mar Marauder. And uh, uh, we, I loved it, and they liked it too, because it's in a Scarface, uh, which for them is a big cultural reference. And therefore, we really found common ground there. I was very happy about that. The production was less happy, because, of course, it was expensive to get. Poi ci sono cinque interventi di musica invece originale, di musica eh, soundtrack, che scandiscono i passaggi e gli emotivi del film, sono solo cinque. And then there's five um, pieces of original music, uh, soundtrack, uh, and they are five specifically because they are there to mark the various um, shifts in the movie. Uh, there's someone here? Uh, mi piace molto il suo film, signore. Grazie mille. Grazie a lei. Um, I really like your movie. Uh, thank you very much. Um, do you have plans to uh, release the soundtrack as a soundtrack? Because I would love to own a copy of this collection of beautiful and horrible music. Well, wh which soundtrack? The original soundtrack or the guy's soundtrack? <laughs> Because the original yeah. soundtrack you can find on Spotify, iTunes, uh, and uh, <laughs> okay, or it's, uh, the other. Uh, well, b both your music and all this extra borrowed music together would make a very interesting compilation. Seriously. Thank it you. Now the original you you find now if you want. The other it's difficult because sono soggetti a diritti, quindi è difficile metterle tutte insieme. Because there's copyright issues, so it's difficult to combine it all. Molto bene, grazie. Grazie. And this someone right here? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations. And second of all, this is a very, very cliched question, but I kill myself if I don't ask. <laughs> Um, what's your advice for a young Italian director to start working in the um, in the industry? That's no, it's not a cliche question. It's very, very difficult questions. No, io dico la, la prima cosa così cattiva direi adesso 2019 di andare all'estero. Mm -hmm. so uh, the first thing would be to go abroad. Already per, here. Perché <laughs> young di Italian director, sì. Italian director now go abroad. It's not a good period. Peer, it's like a middle age now in, other, in our country. But it's getting better, isn't it? Uh, no, but if you want to stay, ma you are Italian? Yes. Okay, parliamo in italiano. Okay. Parliamo okay. In italiano. <laughs> <laughs> Vabbè, no, perché, okay, but if you want Italian? No, no, so if you want to stay, I think the for me the best things was start uh, um, uh, work with documentary. Okay. Not with short, come si dice cortometraggio? Not with short film. It's better with documentary because you uh, begin a relationship uh, with the reality. And then we can start to work with the actors. For me, it's my story. Now it's uh, f 15, 15 years, because I look younger, but I, I don't, I'm old. <laughs> it's 15 years old, 15 years ago. Sorry for my answer. <laughs> but you live in New York? Oh. So, so perfect, that you already go abroad. Already you? abroad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have time for uh, one final question. So there's someone here. Here. W fight for the microphone and you'll get it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I love Fiore and I'm I love this movie as well. I love that it's not a second theory. I, it's different, but it's equally lovable. My question is uh, regarding a beautiful scene. Um, if you, I wish if, um, that you would talk a little longer about the, um, the scene in which he shaves and then he dressed up as a woman and the meaning that um, the overtones that it has for you. It's which scene exactly? When um, he shaves, uh, Nicola shaves, and then he dresses up as a woman oh. in order to kill the uh, mafia boss. Sì, sì, sì. E, mh, ma eh, quella è una scena mh, eh, che viene dalla, dalla scrittura perché è il punto di non ritorno. Io mi ricordo quando abbiamo fatto la proiezione a Berlino e lui si veste da donna e la sala ha riso. Per me è stato anche insomma, forte come reazione. Poi quando accade quello che accade c'è stato il gelo fino alla fine del film. Uh, yeah, uh, the scene comes from the writing, and uh, you know when we had the screening, and, and it is the point of no return, and uh, when we did the screening of the film in Berlin, uh, when he first shows up dressed like a woman, uh, the entire theater started laughing, and I was very surprised to see that. But of course, then when um, they see what, what happens, uh, it was, uh, the reaction was ice cold for the entire rest of the movie. È una scena difficile perché mh, quella già in scrittura era nata, nel senso che potrebbe essere la classica scena da, da film di genere, appunto Daniele Cipri quando giravamo diceva ah, Brian De Palma vestito per uccidere, finché non l'ho mai visto tra l'altro. Quale film? In italiano è vestito per uccidere, non so il titolo. Sì, sì, Yeah, uh, that scene was complicated already in uh, uh, the writing stage. Uh, when I remember I was discussing this uh, with Daniele Cipri, and he was telling me, oh, this is uh, such a classic uh, genre um, scene. Uh, um, it makes me think of Brian De Palma in a movie that I actually never saw, which is Dressed to Kill. Ma eh, però nel, nella cronaca, nella cronaca nera, molti omicidi sono avvenuti con dei travestimenti, che è un mezzo per avvicinarsi alla vittima, travestimenti da poliziotto, travestimenti da donna, travestimenti da operaio, sono cose che sono accadute. Ma in realtà in crime stories è uh, molto normale per uh, murders to happen with the killer in wearing a disguise. Uh, sometimes it can be uh, disguised as a um, police person or as a woman or um, as a driver or something else. It's something that happens all the time. It's a way to uh, get closer to um, the victim. 
e quindi la cosa strana è che non si sa quanto poi è reale una cosa del genere perché anche la realtà spesso la realtà criminale ormai è influenzata dal cinema dalla televisione quindi è uno strano cortocircuito quella scena But this is a strange thing because we don't know to what extent uh, when this happens in real life it is because people see it in the movies so there is a bit of a short circuit situation a, a vicious circles circle in which you don't know whether what started first whether it's real life that is influenced by cinema or vice versa quello che poi a noi interessava quando l'abbiamo fatto è che anche là c'era la, la, la dimensione del, del gioco del travestimento What interested us when we were making it is that at this level as well uh, we could include the dimension of a game, you know, of wearing disguise. And you seen Dress to Kill since? That's why I used to repeat the police No, no <laughs> ancora. Still no. nothing. Oh. It's a great film. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll show it for you here. Okay. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight because there's another screening uh, after and we did We could have thank you, longer. thank you for your questions. Sorry for uh, my answer in Italian. Thank you for your questions. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you Lilia.